Hello and welcome back to Solid Print 3D for another unboxing video with me, Ben Keezer. Today we're going to be unboxing our brand new Raze 3D Pro 3 Plus. Bit of a mouthful, but uh, it is a seriously good machine. It's a vast improvement from their last machine, which was the Pro 2. Uh, a couple of things I'm quite excited for in the change, uh, interchangeable uh, print cores, which is going to be very fun, and also the flexible build platform that's going to take uh, make taking prints off the build platform so much easier. And just generally, the overall look and feel of the machine is just going to be a lot easier to actually uh, to use and for the operations of it in general. So all that's left is to bear hug this cardboard box off. I'd recommend grabbing a friend because it's quite tall and one person can be a little bit difficult. So we've got our lovely cameraman Luke to come and help me today. Just slide this off. So what's in the box when you first open it up? Well, first off, we've got the instructions so we know what to do with them. Chuck them to the side. Next up, we've got a couple of Allen keys, uh, so they'll come in handy later on. And finally, we've got some plug sockets. Um, we've got five different plug sockets, so wherever you are in the world, you'll be able to operate this, or you know, if you fancy taking the machine on holiday with you abroad, then uh, you'll be able to operate it abroad as well. So next up, lowering ourselves down, we've got the top of the machine itself. This is what contains all of the, uh, the atmosphere inside the machine, so it stops it from getting too cold in its operation, and it also stops any fumes getting out that shouldn't be getting out. So I'll pop that to one side again. And we have the actual machine itself here. To store it, to transport it, we've got these little clips just inside, so we'll just remove those now and then we'll get the machine set up. So in the box, it comes with a kit to help you get started, which includes a shim, scrapers, and a couple of filament packs, which is great. So everything you need just to get your first prints up and running. Having a look at the printer itself though, a couple of features which we can mention here. We've got the side door. This is where your filaments actually go, and then they go up through your, your Bowden tubes here, through your feeder tubes, sorry, and uh, go into the print head. The print head itself, like I was mentioning before, you've got interchangeable hot ends, which is really helpful for quick changes. If you want to do a more abrasive material, for instance, you can just swap those hot ends out, pop new ones straight in. The actual size of it as well, this is uh, the, the plus version, so it's a lot taller than just the standard version. We've got our build platform as well. So these just unscrew and then you can pull it upwards and outwards. And this is flexible for helping getting your parts off. It's also magnetically locked into place so that it's completely flat no matter what you're printing, but obviously it is good just to check that part first. Other things about it, uh, nice big touch screen as well, so you can actually upload parts through the cloud. And there is also a little camera in here so you can check on those parts as they're printing. Uh, even if you sat bored at home at a weekend, you can watch your prints go ahead and, and uh, pause it or continue it, start up new prints, that sort of thing. And finally, another point to mention is that it is on wheels, so very easy to transport, makes it much easier to go through customs at the airport when you don't want to take it on holiday with you. So I think all that's left now uh, is to also mention the HEPA filter at the back. So this is for um, filtering out any hazardous materials such as ABS uh, or uh, other plastics that might be a little bit harmful as well. And uh, all I think I'm going to do now is get it set up, get a first print started and see how it turns out. So we've just wheeled it into position. Time to put on a test print. We've used Idea Maker, which is the slicing software that Raze 3D uses. This slicing software is a cloud-based software as well, so we're able to upload things remotely. We're also able to have a look inside the printer at the camera whilst we're sitting at our laptops to make sure that there's nothing on the build platform before we set up the print. And essentially everything can just be done remotely, which is really great, as long as you select the correct materials, obviously. Beforehand though, what we like to do here, and with every F FFF or FDM machine, we put on a layer of Elmer's Disappearing Purple. This is just an adhesive stick. Basically what it does, it allows the parts not only to stick down better onto the build platform, so there's not as much warping, 
but it also helps in the removal of the parts afterwards. If anything's being particularly stubborn, then you can just run it under the water and helps to uh, dissolve that disappearing purple and remove the parts there. But luckily with the build platform here, this is a flexible one, so we can just pop it straight off. However, we will still use this just to be on the safe side. So we've just uh, sent a part to the print. Let's see how it goes. So our test print is complete. Time just to take it off the build platform. Now, luckily with the Pro 3, the build platform is flexible and is securely held in place just by these two thumb screws here. So I'll loosen them off, lift it up and pull it out like so. To take it off, like I was saying, flexible. So all I've got to do is bend the build plates and you can see that falls off straight away. And then what I just want to make sure is to ensure that there's no leftover filament on the build platform before the next print. So I'm just going to pull that off as well there and pop that in the bin later on. This has had some uh, glue put onto it. So what I want to do as well is just wash that glue off before the next print and apply a fresh layer just to make sure that there's no contaminants left on the build platform. And when we put it back down into place, the magnets hold it securely into, into its correct position. And I just want to do up those thumb screws again. With the part itself, we can kind of see an idea of the volume that this, uh, that this beast can go up to. But I've just used normal supports, regular supports with this, which is the same material as the rest of it. With the Pro 2, because you've got two nozzles, we would be able to use different materials. So for instance, if we had our standard PLA, we could apply a breakaway material or PVA as the support material. But just for the test print, we wanted to keep it more simple. So this will just break away uh, in our hands. You can see how easy, easily it is actually coming away now. I might want to clean that up just a little bit more with some pliers later on. But just as a, a rough cleanup, we can see you know, how nice that surface finish is on this part. There's basically no scarring whatsoever underneath the support material. So yeah, that's a really decent part. And I'm really excited to use this for even bigger parts in the future. So as a whole, the Raze Pro 3 is considerably better than the Raze Pro 2. I'm very excited now about this machine. Uh, we've got so many brand new features. For instance, the flexible build plate. For instance, the removable hot ends as well, which we're able to just unclip and reclip straight back in. The whole system itself just looks and feels a lot nicer, is more user friendly as well. And we can also have a look more at the software if you're interested in a private demonstration. Uh, we can head to info at solidprint3d.co.uk, email us and get in contact with us there. Or if you'd like to give us a phone call, our phone number is 01926 333 777. If you'd like to chat to one of our experts, they're more than happy to, uh, to have a conversation with you. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you soon.